at this time, you know, Marty and I, Rockers as a whole, are sort of in a, you know, we've we've dug about all we could do. We've worked with them, and we've had really good matches with them. We've been established as two guys that, you know, again, uh, unbeknownst at the time, you know, would later come to be the curse of the wrestling business. And big two good hands, you know, two guys that could work, two guys that you could count on. Um, but uh, as far as what more you could do with this, there wasn't a lot except of more of the same. And again, so you could mind it all night when they come over there or other, uh, you know, incidents that sort of went on where we felt that we weren't getting the same treatment as, as other tag teams to where, you know, when you, as a team, you sort of make a decision that we've, we've got to do something there. A change needs to happen. Um, and honestly, it was a matter of David, uh, we're splitting up. Um, Marty wanted to leave. Uh, and again, you know, I made no bones about him. You know, to call me and said, look, I, I see him there and go, it's, I understand you guys want to go, so I'm let you go. But I, I, I will tell you right now, um, I see the opportunity as you as a, you know, as a heel star. Um, you know, music, and so whatever you want to come back and revisit that, you let me know. And he sent that, and I said, dude, I don't want to go anywhere. I want to try that. Um, and, and and that was the beginning of and that's when I gave him the idea of the barbershop thing, because that was an idea that I'd had with a party that I'd do with the Nasty Boys. It was just something that I was trying to think of. Um, again, to, to do, you had some, I had some pizzazz is what the Rockers were doing. I uh, told him that, and he just, you know, he thought it was great. We went from there, and then um, after that was, you know, the whole, you know, me getting an opportunity to, again, see what happens. Uh, but there was no, anyway, as you see, you know, there, there's no final decision. One, you know, till quite some time after that that I got with Sherry and everything else. Um, and that's honestly when I started to, again, get a little bit better footed about who are we going to be uh Massa uh I just knew that it was tied as a tag team to either uh you know gun bait or, or you know what I mean or sort of be pigeonholed as you know a tag team for the rest of my career. That wasn't anything that you know, nobody, you know, gets into this line of work for the most part, you know, to be a tag team. <laughs> so I speak, and I don't mean that. I mean, it's a singles business, you know. Like if you're for somebody that's looking to go to the tip top, you're not looking to do that with somebody else because you know that it's that top spot's not with two people, it's one person's spot. So you become the Harvard Kid and you get to this you soul run. Um, and at first, because it, it's like now looking back, people are like, oh, you become the Harvard Kid and it's all great, but. In the beginning, it was kind of just there because you you, like, you worked with El Mattler at WrestleMania 8, you were kind of, you did a couple of things, but it wasn't really T1 the Intercontinental title that became, you know, the wrong stuff that happened. Um, did you know kind of when you were, when you came to the Harvard Kid that you needed to do some work with the Intercontinental title or, or kind of progress working with guys, Bulldog and Brett, and show you could do it? Well, first, you know, the, the turn happened, but, uh, you know, they, they, Wanted me to begin. That was also at a time, as you know, when we were sort of uh, whatever people went wrong. You know, we put a lot of one and then Jacques Rougeau to the Mountie. You know, we, got, we it started to be, that was sort of really the beginning, uh, as best as I can tell, really, to where you go, like, you know, if, if I never used to call you a guy on the dick, you know. Uh, but I, I, as I went back, I think that was probably the beginning of the whole establishing a character type. Uh, although we didn't know that we were going to call it, but I think that was the beginning of that, of that somebody you know, the attack. So they were trying to sort of give me that. Again, they all were trying to help me. Uh, and it was the original one was the idol. Um, and it was again, very similar to this look right there, but... It was just something about the idol, like sort of, and not being Shawn Michaels that uh, that bothered me. It was uh, I can remember again, most sort of like first to went into, into the you know into the water of, of you know, pushing that a little bit against the system as far as 
uh, I don't want to be sort of pigeonholed that way. And I want to say Shawn Michaels, like then Shawn Michaels, I know where Shawn Michaels from the Rockers. I don't want to just walk out, you know, up and hurt them one day and also be called something else. They can remember Robert, Roddy Piper, you know, teaching me that once you change into somebody else, you lose your credibility. Um, and there are certain things that certain guys said to me over the years that I absolutely never forgot. And there are things that just, as I look back, it made all the difference in the world. You know, you say it was, you know, macho man told me, don't dick yourself out of the game. <laughs> and we did. I always knew I pushed, I pushed, I pushed, I rubbed it the wrong way, absolutely everything. But ultimately, I never did that ultimatum of, you do this and I'm leaving. And even if I did leave, there would always be, come on, you want to go back? Because I always, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just about, I absolutely never cut off my nose to spite my face. Again, you know, there are a lot of times that I cut off a lot. But <laughs> I absolutely always made it a point. I can just always remember Randy, you know, tell me that as long as you're here, you've got a chance. The minute, the minute you eliminate yourself, it's over. It's interesting you bring up Randy Savage because uh, his brother, Lanny Goffo, has said a multitude of times, you know, because Randy Savage kind of the unknown thing. He never came back. He was the one guy that never really did it. And that's WWE. But the last thing he really did actually wanted to do was a two-year program with you in the comedy and you beat him. Is there truth to that? Do you, did you hear him? No, I mean, that's one of those things that um, I, I've heard six to him, but, kind of, but that was one of those things I've never heard. Any uh, inkling of that doesn't mean it wasn't true. Um, I was, at that time, I was not, you know, I was not in to know at that point. That was, um, uh, that was me first starting. I know Randy and I actually, and I don't know if it was here, but we, we were at one time, like in 92 or 93, um, Elizabeth was out there, Sherry was out there, and it was, it was a, a televised show from the UK, uh, UK Round Vintage Show. Yeah, you know what I mean? And, and that might have been sort of what, it was and made Randy, you know, Randy feel like, hey, I can do something with this guy. But I was not, you know, I was not at the point yet where I had, you know, made my walk into the door and got, I was still working on my communicado with the, you know, with the head office at that point. So I was not privy to a lot of information um, at, that, at that point. And, and you know, for what's worth, over the years, there have been all sorts of things that I've heard that were pitched about me that, again, even after I was in, you know, you know, he's a hair and don't, you know, you know, I was supposed to wrestle any in jail and whatever that was, and nobody ever told me that. But that guy told me to everybody for that time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and there was, there was, there's never been a WrestleMania match, uh, you know, probably since I don't know, WrestleMania 10, that they don't want to buy me probably four or five months in advance. You know what I mean? Uh, so uh, it doesn't it didn't happen. Just say it's one of those things that, there's a lot of stuff, you know, like, for instance, uh, my lawyer would want to call the bookie media mix. Somebody can say something like, hey, what about so-and-so? And then somebody goes, I have a dump. And, and, and it's dumb. But I mean, the guy can still do, you know, do his podcast and say, like, oh, it was talked about. Nope. Yeah, you know, I mean, technically, I guess it was, but you threw it out there and they shot it down and that was that. And you're like, well, you know, I mean, a lot of, so I don't know if that qualifies as, you know, it was pretty close to that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. I honestly don't. But it's one of those things in the wrestling world that, they, again, I'm not, I'm not casting versions on anyone. Just saying, you know what I mean? There's so much stuff that gets flung up against the wall that, you know, technically, I mean, you'd say anything was, you know, talked about at one time. So, I mean, at least I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so, I, I, I'm unaware of, but all, I can tell you this much. If I had the opportunity, like in 92 or whatever, um, it would have been huge. Um, but yes, yeah, there's that amount of guys um, that you can sort of sit on the learning tree with and then, you know, and like I said, I mean, you know, he, the few things he did say to me, you know, over the short time when they, you know, you know or again, in communication from one another while I was here, man, they stuck with me and they, and they were true. And, and and so he was a smart, smart guy, for sure. Who 
you wonder on one ninety eight five. Yeah. You also always want to have Madness and Smart, but then. Uh, <laughs> hey, yeah. I guess you don't care. Hey, Pete, hey, Pete, hey, Pete, hey, Pete, hey. <laughs> That's another one. There's no other fish stories that are out there. I'd love to tell you, like, yeah. You know, I, didn't, I didn't close the ball market. I did watch them when you get everyone reading Pam Landis and voicemails. There's a point to climb on the cool. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, So you win the Rumble 195, and you were, you were in there at the beginning, you went right to the end, and you go on to work at the Terminash Diesel, risk in the 11. Is, how is that experience for you? And did you think at that point, you know, you've won the Rumble, you've got risk in there, that this was the beginning of you getting into the main events? Is that something you thought was going to happen? Well, um, so... You know, I mean, I was saying, right, right, I knew I was going to wrestle in a gun with Tether. But, you know, I knew I wasn't winning and all that type, type of stuff. You know, I mean, it, but it was certainly, for me, the the biggest turner, I don't get, get that sort of what you're referring to, was WrestleMania 10. I mean, I think that's where I sort of at least put myself on the map of being considered maybe something more than that guy to be the workhorse intercontinental champion. Yeah. You know, again, which was, again, that, uh, that time was, a, you know, again, and still is, was a, you know, batch of Rick and Hunter. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, and it wasn't, you know, and, you know it wasn't, uh, you know, it, I, I think it was the, you know, the match at, uh, at, at 10. I don't think, like, asking you, know, he might be able to, you know, Go farther uh, than that, but it was still it was still you know you know bigger gas territory, and you're all smart enough to know that uh, there isn't a one of us that uh, like that you know teach my guys now, man. Being number two, pretty good gig. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, it's it's you know it's a whole heck of a lot uh, less pressure. Uh, not quite as much money, but a hell of a lot more. Fun. You know. Uh, we all have the opportunity to do the number one thing and you go like, it's cool that my thing, you know what I mean? Who needs to press up? <laughs> you know, who needs to hang up? We'll take the day off and whatever, a little less money. You know, and I'll just say the voice is You know, I do it, I do it twice as long. Well. You know what I mean? Um, and anyway, uh, but no, I mean, I was kind of it. And certainly by that time in the left, I knew that my performances were the things that were getting me there. That was what was, you know, that was going to be the lady I was going to dance with one way or another. And at some point, you know, guys like me and Brad and some of the other guys, we were either going to have our opportunity or we weren't, but it was going to be based on our performances. And so all your time, effort and energy you know, and focus was put into that because, you know, all of us knew we weren't going to grow that much. So, you know, you know, right? once you, once you realize what you're dealing with, well, it is, I mean, I'll tell you what, it's, you know, once you be, once you realize the battle you're fighting, you know, it helps a little bit, you know what I mean? At least you got a direction now and you know, you know, what the heck it is you got to focus on. And, um, and, and so that's, uh, and, you know, again, another guy who gave me advice, Teddy, if you ask me, Teddy just said, well, he said, just keep doing what you know. So the mentally talented arrives in time. 